Now, with our 2010 commencement address, Dr. Victoria Reggie Kennedy. Thank you, Chancellor Motley. President Wilson, Vice President Williams, Chancellor Motley, Provost Langley, Congressman Markey, Mr. Russell, Phil Johnston and other trustees, faculty, alumni, family, friends, and most important, class of 2010, congratulations. You look marvelous. Special congratulations to your families. Not only are your families proud of you, but they made such a difference in your achievement here today. They sacrificed for you, they picked you up when you were down, and they demanded strengths that you didn't even know you had. It really does take a village, and I hope you'll join me in thanking them again for all their help and support. I also want to pay tribute to your outstanding honorary degree and Chancellor's Medal recipients, Daiseku Akeda, Congressman Ed Markey and George Russell, and to the outstanding faculty award recipients as well. President Kennedy said that a nation reveals itself not only by the men it produces, but also by the men it honors, the men it remembers. The same is true of a university. And UMass Boston has both, both produced and honored individuals of extraordinary accomplishments and distinction. Congratulations, honorees, and congratulations to this great university. A former president of Harvard once said that universities are great storehouses of knowledge because the freshmen bring so much in and the graduates take so little out. But I know that's not the case here at UMass Boston. You and the graduating class have worked so hard to meet the rigorous standards of this outstanding school. You are women and men of great accomplishment, and our community, our commonwealth, and our country are enhanced by your achievements. As we saw earlier, most of you are the first in your families to go to college. I identify with you in a special way because my father was the first in his own family to go to college. The son of immigrants and the youngest in his family, he went to college and law school in Louisiana and saw education open the doors of opportunity for him beyond his and his family's wildest expectations. In addition to his professional life, he became active in democratic politics and became friends with a young senator from Massachusetts named John Kennedy. My dad de then ran the senator's campaign for president in Louisiana, and our beloved JFK won that state as he won the nation and became the 35th President of the United States. And along the way, my parents met and befriended the youngest brother of President Kennedy, Teddy. And lucky for me, I did too. Call it kismet or long-range marital planning, but the way I look at it, I'm standing here today because my father had those educational opportunities more than 65 years ago, which started a chain reaction of opportunity, including the opportunity for love and fulfillment for me. So, as I look out at all of you here this morning, I think of the words of the poet so loved by my husband's brothers and dream things that never were and say, why not? My hope and prayer for you is that you do the same. Your class has distinguished itself already with enormous accomplishments and hard work. 
Just take the example of Tao Do. Wasn't she magnificent in her speech? <laughs> Tao, what a, an outstanding record of achievement you've had, and what a bright and limitless future awaits you. You inspire us all. Congratulations. And what a fantastic video produced by Anastasia Carolina played at the beginning as you were being seated. Congratulations to Anastasia for winning first place honors in the My UMass Boston, Boston video competition. As, as you saw this morning, Anastasia's creative production captures the essence of what's good about this great school. It's where dreams come true and opportunities abound and students have choices and prepare for bright futures. My husband would have loved Anastasia's video because it captures what he felt about this school. The additional wonderful qualities that he loved were all about UMass Boston were also creatively captured in the other award-winning videos you saw this morning. He admired the university's commitment to diversity, your excellence in research, your outstanding faculty and administration, and he loved this location. Here on Columbia Point, next to his brother's library, overlooking Dorchester Bay. So when Teddy decided to establish the Edward M. Kennedy Institute for the United States Senate, a living, breathing, constantly growing and evolving center that would bring together his passions for education, history, civic engagement, and the United States Senate, there was only one place he wanted that institute to be, right here on the campus of the University of Massachusetts, Boston. Of course, the connections between the Kennedy family and UMass Boston run deep. My late mother-in-law, Rose Kennedy, received an honorary degree here in 1981. And my husband received the Chancellor's Medal in 1989. Eunice Kennedy Shriver and Congressman Joe Kennedy were also honorary degree recipients. And Joe earned his undergraduate degree from this great university. But as meaningful as those family ties were, Teddy's reasons for wanting the Institute on this campus were much more than that. He felt a deep connection with this student body. You have students from more than 140 nations, most of whom will remain in this country and strengthen and be part of our democracy. You have students who speak more than 90 languages. Nearly half of you are men and women of color. And as Chancellor Motley has proudly said, this community, this university community, looks more like Boston and more like the nation than any other school in this region. <laughs> Teddy believed with all his heart that the strength of our nation was in its diversity and that we were constantly being energized and renewed by the hard work and contributions of newcomers in our nation of immigrants. In choosing this great school, Teddy noted your focus on research, the environment, education, public policy, science, business, history, liberal arts, and saw that you gave back through service to your community and service to our nation. He believed in your mission of public education. He understood that you not only make possible the American dream, he saw that you embody it right here at UMass Boston. <laughs> Teddy felt, and I couldn't agree more, that you represent the future of our great country. He said, there was no more perfect partner for the Edward M. Kennedy Institute to help inspire future generations of involved American citizens than the University of Massachusetts Boston. 
So what is the Edward M. Kennedy Institute for the United States Senate? It will not be, as some have cynically suggested, a static library or a shrine either to my husband or even to the United States Senate. Rather, it will be a dynamic center of learning and engagement that takes advantage of 21st century technology to provide each visitor with a unique and information-rich, personalized experience that literally will bring history alive. The continuing success of our democracy depends on the participation of an informed electorate. And the mission of the Institute is to encourage participation and make information easily accessible. It's our hope and expectation that one visit to the Institute will have a student or casual visitor eager to come back for more. We aim to give a whole new and exciting meaning to experiential learning. The centerpiece of the building will be a large amphitheater that can be arranged to recreate the floor of the United States Senate, either the current Senate chamber that you all know from C-SPAN or the old Senate chamber where they met from 1810 to 1859. All of the senators' desks will be totally interactive. The history of who sat at that desk and almost limitless amounts of substantive information will literally be at your fingertips. The hallways and the walls outside the chamber will have interactive spaces as well. And visitors will be able to sit up in a gallery that will overlook the activities on the Senate floor. There will be classrooms circling the perimeter of the building for further study or hearings or markups on legislation. Our goal is to provide each visitor, each class, each teacher, each student, each lifelong learner with an insight into the workings of their government that they couldn't get anywhere else. Documents and information will be digitized and readily available and can be sorted according to the user's preference. The material won't be presented with a particular political bias or bent. It will be up to the user to decide how to sort and look at the material. If I sound excited and enthusiastic about the Institute, it's because I am, and I hope you are too. As the Institute develops, I want you to know that Chancellor Motley and President Wilson have been and continue to be an integral part of the team, helping to guide us as we cement a rich, productive, and ongoing relationship between the Institute and the university. Together, we're working to improve Americans' understanding of the historical roles of the branches of our government, educate the public about the great debates that shaped the course of our nation's history, and most important, inspire Americans to engage in the public square. And when we do that, we'll be working hand in glove with the best and the brightest right here at UMass Boston. We'll be tapping into your world-class research capabilities and your legacy as a first-class teaching college. As the chancellor says, you're a research university with a teaching soul, exactly what we need to help maximize the student and visi visitor experience at the Institute. With the help of your administration, we're putting together a cutting-edge team of educational advisors to help develop programming at the Institute we're working with former senators and former Senate staffers to have a strong inside understanding of the workings of that institution. We're working with the best minds in technology to digitize the records and develop state-of-the-art interactive touch screens to facilitate the visitor experience and access the information. And we'll draw on the resources of your faculty and your students and your administration in every phase of our project as we move forward. So how does all this translate into everyday life? Suppose you were taking a class here at UMass Boston that was studying the implications of the Compromise of 1850, for example. For those of you not up, to, not up on your mid-19th century US history, 
The Compromise of 1850 was a series of bills that intended to balance out northern and southern interests on the issue of slavery in hopes of staving off the Civil War. So with that brief background, imagine going into the amphitheater, refiguring it as the old Senate chamber, and actually becoming one of those senators. Henry Clay, Daniel Webster, Stephen Douglas, John Calhoun, and the others. You would study their positions, negotiate, argue, debate. Visitors would be watching the action from the gallery. That's just one example and one possibility. But younger students, the educational program would be, would be appropriate to their grade level. For lifelong learners and historians and academics and the casual visitor, there'd be a wealth of information easily accessible and geared to them. The key is that the information can be personalized and you can look at it as detailed or as from such an overview as you like. But at the end of the day, my husband's dream was that by immersing yourself in our history, by reliving the great debates of our time, you would be reminded of the great problems we tackled and great things we achieved when we all came to the table. And you would be inspired to be involved too. He believed that no problem is too hard. No challenge is too great. We are Americans, he said. This is what we do. We reach the moon. We scale the heights. I know it. I've seen it. I've lived it. And we can do it again. The genius and the greatness of the American system is that it empowers us to succeed. It inspires us to serve, and it encourages every citizen to debate and decide how to eliminate our injustices, how to make right what has been wrong, and how to bring this country closer to our finest founding ideals. Our democracy is not static. It's constantly being refreshed and renewed by the participation of active citizens. Our history is the story of our journey, sometimes rocky, sometimes rowdy, but ultimately righteous to make America, America. The story of that journey, as viewed through the lens of debates in the Senate, will unfold at the Edward M. Kennedy Institute in rich and wondrous ways. But what about your own journey? How will it unfold? Your talents are great, and your opportunities are limitless. This great university has prepared you well. America has given you much, and we need you. The problems that confront our society are complex and difficult, but men and women of goodwill like you can make an enormous difference. You are like the ripples of hope Robert Kennedy spoke of that can build a current that can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. Most of us won't make news, but each of us in public or private life can make a difference and help make history. And in the process, you'll find personal fulfillment too. I think Oliver Wendell Holmes summed it up best when he said that we should be involved in the passions and actions of our time or risk not to have lived. So please give something back. And rem remember that service and success are not conflicting goals. In your life's journey, I hope you will achieve both. Class of 2010, look around you. Which of you will serve and succeed and set sail for new horizons that open up opportunities, not only for our country, but for the world? Why not you and you and you? Why not you? In his memoir, True Compass, my husband left us with these words. If you persevere, stick with it, work at it, you have a real opportunity to achieve something. Sure, there will be storms along the way, and you might not reach your goal right away. But if you do your best, 
and keep a true compass, you'll get there. The same is true of our great country if you participate and give back for all it's given you. Thank you.